Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of Midweek Matters, courtesy of the Byram with me, the host, James Graham, and as always, I'm joined on Midweek Matters by Charlie White. How What's are going you? on, Jimmy? You're probably very happy, I imagine, today. I am very happy from the weekend. I've had a bit of a wobble in the week, though. I have heard a rumour about this, actually. Yeah. Well. You're, this is a classic. So I date a redhead. And since dating a redhead, I've started to realise that maybe there is a set, few things sort of missing in the brain department. Mm. And that what you've done enhances my theory further. You've been gingerish, Charlie. Well, I think this deserves some, some gingerish. And I think that could be the root of the issue. Because I've also noticed you're terrible with directions. My missus is also terrible with directions. And this is the kind of thing that my missus would 100% do. Yeah. Yeah, I put... Um Diesel in a petrol car. <laughs> not not only a petrol car, but a petrol electric car. Yeah, hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. I was blowing uh, up at the car thinking that it was something to do with the... the ele- I was like, why? What, like, electrics? Like, oh. And then I've realised it's not the electrics, it's me. I've put petrol... I put diesel in this. But how, how long have you had this car oh, for? Oh, over a year. Over a year. I think maybe two years. The diesel is like always to the side as well. The unleaded petrol, you know, this is... You, you're relaying information that I'm already aware of, mate. Have and, you had a big day? Um, I've been, you had a bit no, on? No. You know what? I, I, was, I, was, I was cruising to Belmore for the season launch. I had loads of time. I thought... And you know what? Normally, I'm the type of guy that runs on fresh air you know like you know when it goes to like so you've got the petrol gauge yeah. and it's like oh i think i had like 60 k's yeah. normally i'm a guy that'll go like 10. i'm a zero guy and then like even even flirt with the how yeah. long can i get it on zero for because we all know they leave you plenty well hamish tank. and andy d- did the test and they got 100 kilometers on zero like it's all bs and you're telling me that now yeah <laughs> like see yeah i well I thought, you know what, I've got a bit of a, like I had some things put on today and I thought, yeah. oh, you know what, I'll fill up now. And I, yeah, I put diesel in there. I reckon this has all come about because you probably had maybe a three-day bender after St. Helens won the World Club Challenge. Mm. And you weren't focused, were you? Mm. Maybe. Yeah. I did have a few on Thursday <laughs> as well. Thursday, okay, yeah. yeah. You know, met with the, met up with the the chairman. Oh, are you sticking around? Oh no, no, I meant the th- I oh, meant the first day before. Oh, right. <laughs> um, oh, it's not even Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you oh, go. if I said that, yeah, oh, ginger, ginger brain. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, <laughs> fair enough. Maybe she's rubbing off on you. Yeah, true, true. Maybe yeah. you're rubbing off on me. <laughs> you know? Maybe, but it was it was an amazing win, and I, I, the scenes of you celebrating. With your vodka orange in one hand, <laughs> cattle's on the sideline. Mate. There's also someone got a – I think we, it was on our Instagram, it, a side-on shot of you like you almost – like you when it, the full-time siren goes, well, just disbelief. No, no. Because at first, right, when, it, when Cleary kicks the goal and then there was a little bit of play full-time, I thought, no, they're not going to meet – they're not going to say a draw. But then I thought I heard the announcer say – extra time didn't hear the golden point right okay. so obviously you know I, I thought it should have been a penalty for uh, accidental offside i was like oh do you take the two or not mm. and then i was like oh, anyway you got the scrum good good great attacking scrum like put on a play and i was kind of like they're being a bit conservative here aren't they and then seeing lewis dodd set up for the field goal and i'm like you're going early and then he's kicked it. And then the bench are all running on, and I'm kind of like, what do they get back? <laughs> get back. <laughs> and then, like, the pennies dropped. And I'm just like, oh, like, they, they've won. They, mm. they've, they've won it. And, yeah, I've got a lot of friends, not just in that team, but that club. Um, I'm from that town, so I know what it meant to them. And, like, I'm... I'm still a, a part of that club. I was a, a fan since I was a little boy. And um yeah, I guess that you when you when you when you support a club and 
you, you watch them in big games that, you know, there's an, an element of evenness. But we, we're coming over to here, the, everything was against St. Helens. It really was. Everything against was against them. Not many people gave them a hope. They were like chance. six dollar outsiders like in that, a that, that's in a two horse race. Yeah. That 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 that's massive in a game like rugby league where, you know, generally the, the favourites win. Penrith record at home. You know, people have people have like it, it just one of those sporting moments where you just like, wow, I, I'm I'm witnessing greatness here, and you know, I think after the fact of the result, it's like, oh, um, the weather. It's like, well, the weather's the same for both teams. And it, I think people have this misconception of what life is like in England. It rains a lot, but it doesn't rain like that. It rains a lot here in Sydney as well. Well, mate, that, that, that rain yeah. was insane. Like, was, you, yeah. you genuinely don't get that type of storm happening in England. So, no. St. Helens went on. The, it's not like they're accustomed to those conditions. Yeah, they play in the wet a lot, but not. Not hailstones, not the humidity as yeah. well that comes thunder with thunder and lightning was thunder, going off in the back. Thunder background and lightning, as well. like all the bit, like how hot it was in the day, like that takes it out of you. Then, you know, one thing that nobody's mentioned, like the net spend on players between St. Helens and Penrith. I bet it, Penrith would have double the amount to spend, I, like every NRL team would. Mm. But no one's taking that into consideration. Like the the spend that's available to that club, the resources that they have, like it's just nowhere near, nowhere near what the NRL teams have. Like it, it's 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 a huge huge win, and I think it's a big lesson out there for 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 any kid or any aspiring athlete. It's just you know you can just get a set of, of having meaning in something, and and care factor. Because I think you, you could see that with St. Helens. They they cared. And I'm not saying Penrith didn't, but perhaps they didn't treat it with this on with, with the same level of importance of what St. Helens did. And it's a it's a big lesson for that. Like if you care about something, you you you, you increase your, your chances of success. Um Well that was seen with every single loose ball that was like a fifty fifty, St. Helens got it. Every yeah. single one. But that's how they play. Right. And that's that's a trait that I don't know if Justin Holbrook bought him, but I know with Christian Wolf, he he was into us about diving on loose balls. Right. If it spills out, you get there. Like he, that was one of his things. He was just so pedantic about where I was almost like sometimes let them have it because they might spill it. Nah, just dive on that loose ball. So that's a trait that's carried on, and you know even that again, like you look at Paul Wellens, it's his. This is like, well, if you count the Dragons game, it's his second game in charge. He had a tri- yeah. like a little trial over in England, but like to come over and and win, like they've been here for what two weeks, three weeks. The numbers of first grade, like it, we, I saw the stats for him. He's played five hundred and thirty first grade games as well. Oh, that's Paul Wellens. Did Paul Wellens, yeah, he's played five hundred and twenty, yeah, yeah. and then James Roby's played four ninety or something like that. It's like no, I think that oh, was the other, other way around. Other way around. Yeah. Apologies, yeah, sorry. Yeah. The um, like. Between the two of them, they've got over a thousand first yeah. grade games. Like, and I think w- one of the things I, I looked at the game, like th- there's some what look like little moments, but the, but they're big moments. So I rate Moses Leota as one of the toughest players in the competition. I remember saying last year he's the only person I've ever seen rock Latrell Mitchell. Matty Lee's, who would be you know 105, 106 kilos. 24 25 takes him on in the first tackle mm. like that takes balls it's to do that moment. and then he gave him the push as well yeah yeah that, like that for me set the tone that saints were there to play yeah the that yeah the conditions and the ball comes loose but how many front rowers in this competition go go head to head with moses leota not and come out on top mm. not many he, like i i love watching that that man play over here playing for penrith love what he brings to our game but saints you know from the get-go went after him and then you look at the defense on an edge as well from St. Helens that up and in where they really sort of I think they they shut down a lot of shifts and the scramble the Wellsby try save on Cleary 
like what a mo- what a moment that is mm. like what a moment it was um it was it was amazing I, like it, unbelievable he even got it. Nathan Cleary scores that try yeah 99 out of 100 times like what every a lot of people look at Wellsby's you know a- attack which it is top level but those those are the types of plays that all the top fullbacks do that yeah they get a bit of a, they get some raps for it but nowhere near what they deserve all the top fullbacks are brilliant defensively and that's what he was and you know, with, with the ball in hand i know he 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 um he made that error he's only human but with the ball in hand he was sensational i think he is the best exponent of picking off short sides in the game we saw him do it with england and i know i was speaking to him one on one um in the build up and he was like i think i think we can get them again because um it, you know he, he looked at that the, the, those edges for for Penrith, um, there was a, a few lads who were involved, and he he looks at the tape in the Sa- Samoan team, and he's like, man, I, I reckon I reckon I've got a, a shot here, and I think he 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 works those short side Lomax as well sweeps around late. The the really good exponents of of any short side weaknesses, and I think it's um, it could be a bit of a blueprint for you know, the rest of the the competition here over here in the NRL that you know, struggle to break break this Penrith team down and um, they're very aggressive up and in defense on their shifts followed by you know look to pick off some short sides and you talk about that error obviously what you're referring to is last blood towards the end of the game bomb goes up Jack Wellsby drops it and then Brian Toto scores the try they level up the game it goes to go on point that would have been such a cruel way for St. Hel- not only St. Helens to lose but also Jack Wellsby when he'd played the game of his life clear man of the match that would have just been it, so unfair. It would, and and sometimes in sport you don't get what you deserve, Charlie. Yeah. That's a sad reality of sport. And I think in reflection, it'd be hard to speak to anyone that don't that would say I don't think Saints deserve to win. I thought they were the better team. Yeah. But this is what champions teams do. Like Penrith are, they're a champion team. They may not have played well, but they find a way to get themselves back into the contest. And that's what that's what they did. And I think. You've got to give them a lot, a lot of credit for that. You know, fair, the first game really together in in a long time. You know, extended breaks for World Cup and whatnot. But I think you know a lot of people are, qu- are quick to to jump on that. Oh, Penrith are going to miss Appy. They're going to miss Kickow. You know, they're going to miss a couple of others. But they they knew they were they were up against it. They had, they had like I say, first run out and all that. But um. I think what people don't say is they found a way to get back in. 12 nil down, not really looking like they were in the game. Could have run away from them. Mm. But they're a champion team. They stayed in the fight. They find a find a way. And, you know, on another day, they get a, a win that, you know, perhaps they don't deserve, but that's what champion teams do. Is this St. Helens team the greatest ever English team? Oh, look, I think... The, the only other team that could rival it is the you know i don't know about all the teams throughout history but i'm just i'm just thinking like in the modern era yes those wigan teams of the 80s they 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 were pretty special and the and the in the early 90s like they were they were professional before anybody else so they were far and far and above they had some some of the games greatest ever british players play for them st Helens, i was part of their the the 2016, which you know, people back in St Helens they'd argue about whether they rivaled the 1966 team, but but again we never saw it. But that St Helens team, yeah, we 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 went on to win a, a World Cup challenge against the Brisbane Broncos, and then you you see the St Helens team now, which again I was a small part of, but to get win four in a row, but they were, which is obviously a, a ridiculous achievement. But then they've capped it off, and I, and I think with, with that result, it's the best team of the Super League era. Some of those Leeds teams, you know, that they've done really well, and like the St. Helens team of 06. But yeah, this this team now will, will go down in history. They come, they came here, no one no one really gives them a chance, and they they go home as winners. And uh, I'm I am so happy and so proud for the the team players the club the town 
they did and 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 for Super League in general because you know a lot of people don't don't seem to you know give it the respect I think it deserves and you know, one of the things as well that I've been meaning to say is like when people talk about Super League they say it is they see it over here as like oh it's an attacking competition like oh he'll do well in Super League because he's really good in attack well say Hounds won through their defense they won through their defense so yeah I'm. Really pleased for them. They're going for their fifth in a row. Um, and I, you know, I, I hope this doesn't take too much out of them because, um, yeah, it's been like they sacrificed so much to come here and, and put it all on the line. They've really damaged their chance of domestic success and but they go back there as winners and this will be uh, the, com well, not, not a confidence boost, but, yeah, installs that belief that we'll be, uh, we can beat mm -hmm. anyone because we have. Well, I don't think anyone would argue with you that they're the greatest team in Super League history, but let's move on to NRL now. Mitchell Moses is staying with Parramatta. Tony here, who's obviously a big Eels fan, he was skipping down, I saw, <laughs> down the street in his way in. but he he's Clicked he's, his heels yeah, for a little yeah. bit there, Tony, didn't he? Oh, he's pumped. He's going to stay at Parramatta. He's brushed the Tigers. It's obviously not confirmed yet, but that's what Michael Chambers has reported, and he rarely gets things wrong. So massive news for Parramatta. Huge news. Huge news that he is staying. You know that that he, he is such an important player for them, such an important player. When he plays well, they play well. Like he's in, he's going into argu arguably his most important years um, as a halfback. Like that experience that's that that he now has. He's been to a grand final. He wants to do more of that. And it's a huge shot in the arm for the Parramatta Eels to, to, to have him you know, commit to the, the next four years. And, you know, when people look at Parramatta and say, oh, they, the, the window's closing because Marnie's gone. And, you know, and um, uh, Papali'i. Papali'i's gone. Yep. It's like, oh, the, the window's gone. So, well, hang on. Now you've got him in. Put some more players around him and they'll be looking to go one better. Make no mistake, this is massive for Parramatta. And Dylan Brown's probably one of the best five eights in the game. Yeah. He took a leap. Last year, maybe he takes another leap this year. You know what you're going to get with Clint Gufferson, Josh Hodgson. Yeah. Who knows what you're going to get out of him this year, but he looks fit. If he can stay injury-free, you know, that spine is is up there with the, the best in the competition. The question I have for you is $1.25 million for Mitchell Moses. So that the way the salary cap works, he's going to be the highest paid player. If Mitchell Moses is your highest paid player, can you win a premiership? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can. Like, whoever, whichever team wins a premiership, it'll be either the seven or the one will be the highest paid player. So, yeah. Do you like, we're actually going to talk about Parramatta and their premiership chances in the season preview, so we can go a bit more in depth there. But the off-season drama sort of carry on. We jinxed it a couple weeks ago, but now the Dragons, what? after the mudgy loss. Whoa, 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 whoa. We jinxed it. Yeah, was it? Was it you? It no, was no, just no. me, wasn't it? Just, yeah. just you jinxed Again, it. Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the yeah. NRL. Yeah, I've let. I've let. Uh, who did I let down last time? The Rabbitohs and Jack White and Latrell mm. Mitchell. I've also let down the Dragons. You're letting it, the game down. To be fair, it's the exact same thing as well, isn't it? Well, a couple it was, of guys wrestling. It was going to be my um, fart in a tornado. This is. Yeah. 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 I think that's fair enough. Like. Some people go out, they go back to the hotel, they have a disagreement, like breaking up a, jeez. Like the, I guess the concern is they had a really crap performance, 6 a.m. in the morning, so they're obviously still going at 6 a.m. Um, Look, I, It's I, just I, a bad I, time for this. It's almost scripted. Rugby league is <coughs> sometimes scripted. It's like, of course, it's the Dragons that mm. have this instant after the performance they had. Because... Mm. Well, I, look, I, I know some of those optics or some of that information, it, like, it doesn't look great. You know, I, I didn't see the Charity Shield. I was listening to it on Triple M on the way out to the St. Helens game, but you know, it, it's hard to believe, you know, listening to Ben Dobbin is, is tough enough. So, but I, I He stayed. was calling for Hook's head as well during oh, that game. I was listening oh, to that. Ben Dobbin, sort your, sort your commentary out, my friend. Um, yeah, look, <laughs> I think... It's important to remember, just a trial. It was a pre-arranged night out. Should they be going to 6 a.m.? Ah, I mean, 
I, I imagine that this would be the last blow up. People, pe- yeah, some people will, it, will, it, will I think some it, people will will, ne- will never understand that, yeah. and that, and that's that that's fair enough. But for for me, the teammates have these little bickers all the time, and sometimes there's a bit of GST involved in these things as well when they come to the the media. I mean, no one's going to click in the like you know a bit of a boring headline about oh, two dragons players exchange words. <laughs> At, at one a.m., yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like if one of them had a punch start, if they had a punch down or whatever, it's like oh, and you know, but it's it is it's it's a fart in a, torn- a fart in a tornado. If it's or not fart in hurricane, isn't fart it? Not in a fart, yeah, in, yeah fart in hurricane. Yeah, <sighs> come on. All right then. Well. The NRL season launch has been cancelled because of the CBA disagreements. It seems like there's a couple steps forward and a couple steps back, and it's continually dragging on. I mean, with the NRL season is eight days away now, so if we don't have a result soon, is there genuinely a chance that we could see the first round postponed? Well, eight eight days, Charlie. Yeah, that's um, that is exciting. We should be excited about it. You know what? For me, I'm happy it's been cancelled. <laughs> Don't waste your time going to a season launch. Get the CBA sorted out. Drop everything else. Don't you know if if someone from the press calls you and says, "Hey Andrew, hey Peter, hey Clint, where are we off to?" Don't take the call because we should be all time and focus should be on CBA. I know there's a me. I know that there's media out there that are thirsty for inf- information, updates. Where are we at? We've been saying this for weeks. Like, it should be number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the agenda. And, you know, I, the season launch hasn't been cancelled because of what I'm saying. It's because they want to avoid em- embarrassment. But don't don't have anyone go to the season because you should be focusing on getting the, get the CBA sorted out. The players won't care as well. We don't have to go to the season launch. I'm sure that would be an annoying thing to have to go to. Um, there was one it's more of a media thing. It's not yeah. like for the fans and stuff like that. There was I remember going to one. I think it was 2015 or 16. It was in Sydney, and it was a scorcher. And you know, some people and like it was like ridiculously hot in this marquee, and they just had these like fans going. And you know, when some people just can't read the room, and like the, a sponsor got up and started talking, but just like kept to the script. Like, you mean like just wrap it up? Just say, look, no one, n- nobody was focusing on the person speaking because it was just like, oh, uh, you, you, all you could think about was how hot it was <laughs> in this tent marquee, <laughs> and obviously the NRL didn't plan for it to be like a scorcher, but you just get up and go. We're really pleased to be partnering. We we we, we know it's hot, and thank you for your support. We'll continue supporting and helping out. Yeah, but they went on and on and on. It was kind of like you know you kind of get dis a bit disillusional and all the it it was ridiculously hot. I yeah. think yeah, fourteen or fifteen. If there's any players out there or people out there that went to that one, it was down in I think Hyde Park in Sydney. It was. Um, great experience but no I, I i don't think the i think the players like supporting the game launching the game obviously they realize that the, the there's an importance to this but it's probably not a you know it's probably not some it's probably not something that they look forward to doing but it's something that they value as an important thing but it's i don't think anyone will be losing too much sleep well eight days to go let's get it sorted so we can see round yes, one come on Paramount versus we, Storm kick we, off the season we, as well. That's going to be. A good I really game. hope it doesn't come to industrial action. Some disappointing news for Penrith fans. Taylor May's done his ACL. He's out for the season, which is another massive loss. I know we talk about their production line. They probably do have someone come in. The I mean the the guy was fullback for Fiji the World Cup. Taruva. Yeah, he was yeah. good. He's, he he, really he's probably going to slot in on yeah. that wing. Although I saw some other report that they've just uh, put Jesse McLean in their top 30 squad and he might get that that wing spot. Um, 
But it's a it is a massive loss. Yeah, Taylor May. Yeah, he he was um, he's been outstanding. Yeah, um, and obviously Charlie Staines has moved on as well. Who would have been the natural replacement last season? But yeah, look, Penrith have, have lost a couple. Um, and you know we we spoke well, actually sorry we didn't speak. You <laughs> spoke the other week about how um, you know you looked at Penrith's ACLs versus. A team like the Roosters. Yeah, they haven't had one in five years. Well, Charlie, they hadn't until you <laughs> opened your mouth. But no, in in all serious seriousness, mate, it's um, yeah, big, big. It's a it's significant loss, but one that I think the Panthers will be be able to manage. It is just stacking up a little bit though. Now the players it, they've lost, so the, we'll, it is it is. But you know, and if there's a team that's able to handle it. It'll be Penrith, and they've still got, you know, they've still got the best number seven and the best player in the competition in Cleary. Yeah, um, and he's backed up with his little mate Luai, who's you know up there with the best five eights as well. So, and tremendous forward pack, you know, lots of strikeout wide. Dylan Edwards is Dylan amazing. Like, they missed him massively. Yeah, they, they're the going to be tough challenge. to beat, mate. They're going to be tough to beat. All right, well, let's preview some of these clubs. Then we've got, we're going to do the Eels, the Cowboys, the Manly Seagulls, and the Storm today. Uh, we'll start with Parramatta. We spoke, obviously, about Mitchell Moses staying with them, but, you know, they've lost Reed Marnie. They've lost Papa Lee. They've lost Nia Kore. They've lost Ray Stone. Um, Josh Hodgson's come in, and Jermaine Hopgood looks like a good signing from, from Penrith. Are they contenders this year? Yeah, I think they are. Um, no doubt last year would have hurt them you know being involved in that grand final I think that should be you, you I can only assume that that's a the a, the big motivator for them um you know the Hodgson comes in you know he's got grand final experience as well um I'm right in thinking they, they finished outside the top four didn't they last year um I'll have to check that I'll have to just quickly check that. I think uh, who was the top four? I think they were in the top four. I think they played. Um, who they play week one? Pen- Penrith. Oh, they they yeah, they came yeah, fourth. Sorry, yeah. yeah, they came fourth, fourth didn't yeah. they? Yeah, losing that. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, yeah fourth. Mm. Look, I think. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one, Parramatta this year. Well, I mean, they made the grand final. Penrith yeah. have come back to the to the come, field yeah, slightly. They, yeah. I mean, it, it's just gonna it's just gonna come come down to attitude for them. I so say this with a, with a lot of te- with about a lot of teams, but it, it'll come down to attitude and are they okay with what happened last year, or do, do they want, have, have they got that hunger now to go out there and um, and go one better? I think the the, the sign had Moses gone the other way, yeah. It, it, it would have been a, a struggle, but I think that's a huge boost for everyone there. That, and also, I, I think if you if you Brad Arthur, you go, hey boys, we got to the grand final last year. We 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 didn't play our best, but now hey, no one's given us a chance again. Mm. Like play on that narrative a little bit. You know, the world doesn't think you're all that good. I I think personally that I think they'll struggle to make the top four. Okay. Which I think they need if they're going to win it. Um, Is that just because some of the personnel they've lost? You think? No, no. Just I, th- I, I think they overachieved last year. No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I just think that there's some, some teams, some teams there that um, w- w- some other teams will, f- will fill that top four, and unfortunately, Paramount will be one that will fall out. Well, Madison missing the first few weeks doesn't help them as well, because mm. that these the he, f- he he took. Stampy the elephant, didn't he? Yeah, he took the elephant. Whereabouts in the top eight? Then do you see him falling? Uh, not sure exactly. B- bottom half of the top eight. Okay, okay. yeah. You know, what, if anyone, do you reckon there's a chance? Then, if you're saying that, do you reckon there's a chance they miss the eight? Well, I mean, it's it's possible. Not it's possible. Like everything's yeah. possible. I mean, do you think they could miss the eight? Because because nah, some of the teams nah, have they, improved. No, they they they. they, they I th- Mate, you know what? Anyone that is like 
tracking what I say about these reviews would be like, yeah, you mate, say there, it's there's, like, there's like 14 teams in yeah. the top eight. It's no, pathetic. no one's in the bot. No, no wooden spoon this yeah. year. It's pathetic. Nah, but, nah, it, you get paid to, to have your opinion on the game. I know, I, I do. Do you just, know what? Next week you're gonna have to do a top eight. Last, am I? Yeah. Why don't, you, why don't you, you know what though? It's just a load of bollocks, isn't it? Because because <laughs> no one checks it at the end. Of well, the no season, one, do no it. one checks it. There's no consequence for being right or being wrong. <laughs> well, actually, no. There's no consequence for being wrong. Like, you know, everyone got the Cowboys wrong last year, and it's like, huh? Well, we got it wrong, but then it's like, hey, I told you, I told you. Like, but, but Parramatta fans probably want to know what, you, how you think they're going to go, mate. You know, we, you know, we spoke about Jack. Chat GPT. If yeah. Chat GPT can't answer how everyone, every, who's going to win the comp, neither can James Graham, and neither can anyone else. Maybe this is the time to say all the experts are talking bollocks. Yeah. But they don't know because the season, you know, you can make an educated guess. Like I think the Roosters will likely win the comp. I think they'll do really well. But you know what? It's just and don't read too much into your predictions from. Media personnel, <laughs> like it is just. Well, we've got three clubs to go. So the Cowboys, they signed James Tarmow, and they've lost the hammer. Luciano Lelua is also. Oh yeah. He's no fault standout policy. I think his court case doesn't start until July. So there's the large. The likelihood is he misses the whole year because of this. Um, Helam Luki is a good young back row who they can bring into that spot, but he's out for the first few weeks as well. But the Cowboys in the trials looked looked pretty good. They looked really good last year. <laughs> yeah, fair. yeah. Um, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's a team that you know a lot of the clubs that didn't do so well last year were trying to emulate. Mm. Yeah, you know, oh, we can be the Cowboys of 2022. Yeah, and so, a lot of people have the Cowboys as one of the teams that could fall out of the top eight this year. Yeah, but well, I, I think yeah, they're, they're a bit of an easy target, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, especially being all the way up there in Townsville. They don't get the same amount of attention as you know, if someone predicts that they're not going to make the eight you know, versus you know, Parramatta, that makes headlines where mm. with the Cowboys, it, it doesn't. Um, again, I know, I know, like, again, uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to say? It's Top eight. Uh, everyone's in there. Uh, I'm, I'm full of hope and full of optimism. That's, that's why we keep strapping ourselves in because at this point, everyone is looking great. Everyone's yeah. had the best piece season. Everyone's trained the house down. Some have looked great in trials. Some have looked dreadful. But it's 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 why we love the sport. We keep going back to that unpredictability. I need to come up with a table and tell you who my top eight is. Well, I, to week. be fair, I actually reckon the Cowboys are going to be really good this year. Really good. Like Scott Drinkwater, he's made he made that fullback spot his own last year. Mm. That all that spine's yeah. settled. Tommy Dearden's going to take another leap. Um, Chad Townsend, you know what you're going to get. He was really strong for them last year. Reese Robson, Robson's quality. Ruben Cotter, um, yeah. Murray Tuolangi. They've got Val Holmes. They've got so many good players, and they, they've got more young players coming through as well. Like Tom Duffy in the trial, the halfback. He looked really good in the first trial. Well, I, I reckon. See, see how you're coming on board to just fall in, fall in love, and then I think the Cowboys are going to be really good. I, well. Could be wrong. I don't. I'm, I'm I don't no doubt expert. You. I don't doubt you. So do you have them top eight? I have them in my top eight, which includes all four, all seventeen <laughs> teams. <laughs> um, quickly, then let's rattle through his last couple. Manly, um, they've lost Kieran Four and they've lost Mike Tapao. They've lost Dylan Walker. Um, one of their signings, Kel Matuolangi, looked amazing yeah, he's against the Roosters. It's almost like him and Olakwatu are the same players on no, different I, edges. I, I, I didn't see too much of that trial, but he, he, he was a gun last year for the Tigers. Yeah. Like a gun, can't believe that, that he managed to slip through there. But um, he looks a lot fitter this year as well. Mm. Like it looks like he's and t- and you know how this team come together. That's the big one. Schuster as well. He is settled in that halves role now. Yeah, him and Cherry Evans, mate. Really, it's all about Tommy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If he can. If he can play twenty plus games, eighteen plus games, that so, you know, manage the origin period, that's it. But then how Seabold, you know, we he came on the show. I think he's a fantastic coach, um, great person to to talk to and listen to. How he gets that group together. The Melbourne Storm, then that's another team that are uh, some probably really bad news for Storm fans. Was Papenhaus did an interview 
on Triple M the other day, and that tag that said um, six to eight weeks is when they'll expect back round six to eight. He thinks that's really ambitious. That's what he himself said. So that's their whole season is just a big question mark over if Ryan Pappenhausen is going to be fit at all or when he's going to come back. You know, yeah, that's that's not good news for him. All the storm, like he's. He's he's a he's a player that gets people off their seats. Like it's not good news for the competition. Never mind the storm. Yeah. Like the fan, like fans love him. He's just he, he's so exciting to watch. So exciting. He does things that people just can't because of his freakish speed, and it looks even better with his mullet. And like he looks quicker with a mullet, doesn't he? Well, Channel Nine's promo is all about Ryan. One of their promos they're running is all about Ryan Pappenhausen. Well, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. He's a huge loss, but I mean, yeah, some, they've lost a lot of experience as well. Is Bromwich. this the year Melbourne finally fall out the eight? You're not going to hear me say that. No, they're in your top eight. They're in my top eight, which includes not all 17, but um, yeah. Don't the the thing I reckon, if, if this Pappenhausen stuff continues over the next... 12 months or so, and we don't see him much this year, I think a lot of people are going to say that they picked the wrong fullback to keep. Because when Pappenhausen went down for his concussion at Magic Round, Nico Hines came in, yeah. and they were they blitzed it. They were on fire, the storm. Pappenhausen came back, and they ended up not winning the comp that year. Mm. Nico, Hine lit, Nico Hines obviously leaves, goes to Cronulla. Um, he's now, in many people's eyes, the best player in the game. Storm don't normally get these things wrong, but they might have got it wrong... They prob- possibly should have kept Nico Hines over Ryan Pappenhausen. I think that narrative will appear. Yeah, but it's all short term, isn't it? All reactive to the now. Yeah, like, yeah, you know what? You you let Pappenhausen go, and he doesn't pick up these freak injuries, and no, oh, there you got it wrong then. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, St- Stormer in my top eight. I top seventeen. <laughs> I'll, I'll maybe I'll come up with a bit of a table. Well, I think next next week we'll do some predictions. You can go top eight, your premiers, Dally M, all that sort of fun stuff. Maybe, yeah, all that crystal ball. Get your all crystal balls crystal out. Ball out. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to the final thing. Ask Jimmy anything. It's popped out on Instagram. We have got a heap of questions. The first one um, I want to get to is from Liam Finnegan. He wants to know what NRL club do you think would benefit the most from signing Jack Wellsby? Benefit the most? Well, <laughs> a player that needs a marquee. Or, sorry, a team that needs a marquee. Maybe the Dolphins, but um, I don't know. Dolphins are a union with his, the assistant coach up there now. Ah, uh, yes. Dol- Dolphins would benefit from him immensely um we've got this question seems to come in every week as well um it's from let me just make sure i get the instagram name right it is who's it from Uh, let me find hang on this question seems to come in every week it's from my brunch underscore shop square or round crumpets well, that's a fascinating question for fa- the listeners. Fascinating qu- question uh, from my mate Barks, actually, who, who runs a sandwich shop. And he, uh, do you know the, do you, I always sing to him, you know, you know the um, 50 Cent, I'll take you to the candy, candy shop. I'll, sing to him, I'll take you to my sandwich shop. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll put some mayo on top. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I reckon you've got to go square, you know, because you, you, you... But is a square crumper not just a waffle? Oh, now you've opened up a bigger can of worms. Because you know what? I was at someone's house the other week, and they're like, do you want a pikelet? And I don't think you need a name for a pikelet. I think it's a small crumpet, a thin crumpet. Yeah, it is. I don't think a pikelet needs to be differentiated to the crumpet. Waffles, I reckon they are different to crumpets. Square crumpets... I, I like the square. They're more symmet. I was going to say more symmetrical than the circle, <laughs> wasn't I? I think you get more of a. I think with the square ones, you get more surface area. Yeah, so easier to spread. Is that what you're thinking? Oh, no, no. I think you get more. 
Yeah. You, the, I think, you know, pound for pound, square crumpets all over them. Fair enough. Well, Rourke Armstrong. This is more of a serious question, actually. He wants to know, um, he said, obviously, the NRL is doing a lot for concussion, but is there enough being done for the average bloke in his local comp who's played a few hundred first grade games? Um, no, there probably isn't. And I think as there is a culture shift around concussion, um, we'll, we'll see that, unfortunately, it will have to trickle down to those lower lower grade comps. I think what what the, see what a concussion is. It's so hard to be definitive about, and the best um, the best form of diagnosis is honesty. And I think that's what we we need to that that message needs to get across, especially into the community game, because you know they don't have doctors there, they don't have spotters there. They just start, and, and and probably similar to, you know, NRL players when they're playing a the game, but especially when they're at training, like these can happen. But unless, unless you, you know, put your hand up and say, I've, I've been, um, I got, I got stung there. I'm, you know, I, I feel like I've had a concussion. The the best form of diagnosis is is honesty. Is the player coming forward and saying, yeah. I feel like I was concussed there, um, th- there's, and and that that's that's across you know the game in a multitude of sports. It it's got to be honesty, and you know I think that we, we are moving forward with this. Um, I mean some some great steps, but th- there has, there has to be a culture of of honesty and, and and treating it seriously. That that's the best way to to help tackle it, and, and the easiest solution. Yeah, there's some other things that we can do, but. I, I feel that's the best way to to help the community level. Finally, then, Pezus one one five wants to know what can the NRL do to increase spectator numbers at live games. Oh, look! I guess we're getting into that whole um, that debate around the suburban grounds versus the bigger grounds. Look, show what it's like. At, at, sh- embrace the atmosphere. So at that Penrith game on Saturday, wasn't a full house, um, but it's a fit. I like you know, I've been at, played at Penrith, and the atmosphere can be can be good. They get that <laughs> all the time, which as an opposition player, like, <laughs> shut up. Um, but St. Helens fans were singing, getting behind their team. Uh, I don't know whether this is because you know, the first time in a while Penrith have been in a game, especially at home where. The Penrith fans started to fire up. And they got yeah. to get behind their team, and you could sense that th- there was atmosphere there. One of the arguments was, oh, "Why didn't you watch the game? Why did you go to the game for the atmosphere?" Well, a lot of the time now there is no atmosphere, so people don't go to the games. It's like, well, why would I go? Because there's no atmosphere anyway. That was my whole reason for going. But you know, NRL or any team needs to look at how you can generate atmosphere and that th- that for me is, is is what it's about i would i would get rid of a core stadium as a for, for club games that are not going to pull a big crowd like when it's nothing worse than thursday night it's a south against the dogs and there's like four thousand people there and you can just it just feels empty it feels like you're playing yeah, during the, covid times the, there are some some games that um I, I played at some of those bigger stadiums that can feel like a little bit of a library at times yeah. but you know, there's reasons why why they are there. I guess, is it, you know, for, for that fan writing in, it, it's an issue for them. But I guess for the NRL, is it a priority? I, I'd, I'd say it would be down the pecking order. It should be a priority, though. Should it? Well, you look at it's the rival sport, AFL, they have sellouts f- for almost everything. Yeah, but do they, you not think going to a game then increases the chance of someone becoming a member of a club? Like, but perhaps. You know, but, but is, you know, uh, it shouldn't uh, necessarily I know, be about I know, the money side of things. Charlie, I, I, know, I know it shouldn't. Yeah. I know it shouldn't. And I love going, I, I, I prefer the state. Don't you, I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying. I love the stadiums being full. 
love to play in front of big big crowds. Love to to be a fan and gen and, and be part of an atmosphere. But is that a priority of our sport right now? I, I would I, I don't know if it if it's that or if it's bottom line. You know, do you you know if say for example the Bulldogs? I'm sure they'd love to play at Belmore week week in week out. But you know, don't quote me on this, but I believe it actually costs them to host. Right. So. You know, we, we all like the romance of back to Belmore and you know, yeah, people piling in. And but does it does it hurt the bottom line? And is the is is sport become too much of a business now, where the the bottom line is 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 the be all and end all, and you have to, the, the price you pay for that is we, we move the games out to the to the bigger stadiums. Well, we'll have to maybe work that out another time because we've probably got to wrap it up now, yeah, I reckon. let's wrap it up and look forward to my top 17 next week. <laughs> Thanks, as always, everybody, for joining us on the buy round. Catch us next week. And I think next week we've got uh, the big one starting as well. Is it next we week? We do, yeah. Week Brandon yeah, Smith so. on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. For ask, ask me anything. Yeah. Even when's the sh- I keep People keep asking me when's, when's it, it start? starting. Feb 28. Like, what, what's this show? Don't. <laughs> like Charlie, you not. <laughs> I can see why people would be a bit more interested in Brandon Smith though than me. I think that's only fair. Well, hey, uh, don't sell yourself short, Charlie. Thanks, mate. Well, and also speaking of um, next week, this is this is the last show that um, will be done at Hello Sport. You're, obviously, you have got Aaron Woods that you're interviewing, which will come out Sunday. That is going to be here. But just a massive thank you to Tom Tobler, Eddie for having us here. I don't. Who knows where? Um, where the spiral would even be at if it wasn't for Hello Sport. Yeah, no, honestly. it's um, very much appreciated to all the podcast families, really. You know, like the Hello Sport boys have been fantastic for us. Um, Bloke and a bar as well. Bloke and a bar have been fantastic for us. And they just, I think it's that let's help each other. Let's help each other grow this space. And um, yeah, very grateful. And, you know, if the favour ever needs to be returned, if there's a leak in the roof or anything like yeah. that, you can always come on down to, to our place. Here, and uh, yeah. <laughs> get involved but no it's been a it's been a a, a a real help for us and it, and it won't be forgotten and we're very grateful for them so um yeah thank you to the to the hello sport team and the bloke in a bar team as well um let's wrap it up hey charlie yep. uh enjoyed the last week of football freedom <laughs> <laughs>